Hi, I'm Praveen Malik, and today I'm going to present Envisioning a Light-Based Quantum Computational Nano-Cyborg. This presentation is based on a paper by the same name presented at IEEE IMTronics 2022. If we were to think about the definition of cyborg, it's essentially a combination of the words cybernetic and organic. And whether we're talking about mechanical cyborgs, intelligent cyborgs, or adaptive cyborgs, they all derive from mind-based processes, which due to the limitations of mind strapped into memory and algorithms, have constraints that would limit the kinds of operations that can be performed that this paper is going to actually transcend by considering the essential nature of light. And this essential nature of light is going to break also the conceptualization that there is substrate independence. Substrate independence implies that a conceptual space can be created that would be the same regardless of the kind of materials used to create a cyborg. And essentially, I'm going to propose that the way to think about substrate independence is to anchor it in light and to see how the different substrates emerge from light. And that's going to provide us a different a kind of freedom as we'll see as we go further into this presentation. So essentially, what this presentation is going to cover in the next 20 minutes, I'm going to go over the foundational quantum computational model of light. I'm going to consider the organic surfacings and matter and light that create these organic substrates. I'm going to speak a little bit about light-based quantum computational mechatronics draw some technological extrapolations to do with the different kinds of nano cyborgs and then offer summary and conclusion. So let's dive into the core model of light. This is depicted in this matrix over here on the right. And essentially, if we consider this matrix, we'll see that there are four primary rows depicted by the Rs, which is reality at different layers of light traveling at different conceptual speeds. And if we consider a native state of light to be light traveling infinitely fast, then there are certain properties that emerge because light traveling infinitely fast in any volume would be present in that volume instantaneously. Therefore, there's a property of presence. This light would overcome anything that was not in the nature of light and therefore there's an implicit property of power. Anything that arises or disappears in the nature of light would be recorded in its substance and therefore there's a property of knowledge. And since everything is connected together in the nature of light, there would be an implicit property of harmony. Now, due to a first quantization and the quantization function is depicted by this down arrow, there is a objectification of these four properties of presence, power, knowledge, harmony, so that they become more concrete in a manner of speaking. And what is meant by presence becomes a set of presence with a large number of elements related to presence. Similarly, power becomes a set of power, knowledge becomes a set of, power, of knowledge, and harmony becomes a set of harmony. Due to further quantization that is affected physically by light conceptualized to be projected at an even slower speed, these Elements in these sets combine together in infinite number of unique ways to create infinite seeds. And then due to a further quantization, a third quantization, where light is projected at speed C, so the known speed in the physical universe, these seeds, the infinite number of seeds, now needing an arena in which to exist, form what we can consider to be the substance of space. Whatever is in these seeds will manifest over some relative time. And that's summarized by this T or time symbol here. The subtlety of what's contained in the seeds becoming more material necessitates a 
change in energy, and that's summarized by E, and the relationship between seed and seeds and seeds and seeds is summarized by the notion of gravity or G. But if we think about this a little further, we'll see that these four properties that create the macro environment when light is projected at speed C, so space-time energy gravity are none other than knowledge, power, presence, and harmony. Because if we think about space, then containing in it the archetypes of all kinds of seeds, it's a repository of knowledge. As these repository of seeds materialize against all odds through time, it's essentially capturing the idea of power. Since this transformation of energy from subtle to material essentially makes present whatever is in subtle form in the seed, energy is related to presence. And since there's this implicit relationship between seed and seed and seeds and seeds that we call gravity, this is nothing other than harmony. So we see that the first macro creation that exists when light begins to project at speed C is what we term as space, time, energy, gravity. And this is significant because this would also imply that the substance of the quantum veil or what really separates what materializes to that which is behind materialization is of the substance of space, time, energy, gravity or nothing other than these four properties of light. So that becomes a script that in a sense has genetic type information uh, encoded in it, or this script is at the base of all genetic type information. That's another way to say it. So when we think about organic surfacings in matter and light, let's take the same light-based matrix. And here it's in a slightly different form. And if we consider X to the base U, so that's some initial state that due to the iteration of this matrix or the application of this matrix creates a transformed state. And then with the next iteration of this matrix, the untransformed or initial state takes on the value from the previously iterated or transformed state. And therefore there's a series of iterations that takes place. Now the first iteration from this macro environment of space-time energy gravity, we may think of as the electromagnetic spectrum, but precisely and following these four properties of presence, power, knowledge, harmony, we can see if we consider the equation equal to mc squared, that presence becomes then a function of the E, which is correlated to frequency and divided by C squared. So there's obviously a different mass potential that is implicitly applied within the electromagnetic spectrum. And that becomes a property of the electromagnetic spectrum. Similarly, as the frequency varies, there's a different power and we know that. And therefore power itself in the electromagnetic spectrum becomes a property of its variable frequency. The knowledge can be thought of as the range of wavelengths implicit in the electromagnetic spectrum. And we know, for instance, that radio waves is fundamentally different from microwaves, is fundamentally different from gamma rays, just to give an example. And they operate differently. So there's an archetype of knowledge that's set up. And similarly, the electromagnetic spectrum traveling at a constant speed of 186,000 miles per second, depicted here by C to the base U, sets up a certain harmony. And as this speed is uh, changed, uh, if it could be changed as uh, depicted conceptually in this matrix, then this notion of harmony would be different. So we see that implicit in the electromagnetic spectrum, we have these four properties that emerge. Uh, or another way to say that is that the first iteration of this matrix creates this organic surfacing of a pre-material form, which is the electromagnetic spectrum, which is nothing other than uh, the way in which presence, power, knowledge, and harmony uh, show up. Now, with a further iteration, we can see that quantum particles emerge from this matrix as well. And here, I'll go with this a little more quickly. 
we see that a presence is a function of the Higgs boson. Anything that has mass at the quantum particle level is due to the interaction of the Higgs boson particle with the Higgs field. We see that power energy is basically a function of leptons. Um, and so we have a surrogate of a well-known lepton, which is the electron, which we know uh, the capture and release of, of which is accompanied by a large amount of power. We know, for example, that quarks has to do with knowledge because if we think about protons that determine the number of protons that determine the atomic number, we know that protons are entirely made up of quarks, therefore quarks must be a carrier of knowledge. And similarly, we know that all quantum particles are bound together uh, due to the action of bosons. So again, we see that quantum particles can be thought of as an emergence of light's property of presence power knowledge harmony iterated uh, at a further level. Now, we can also see that due to a further iteration, atoms are created. And here, for example, if we consider the periodic table, we know that there are arrangements of atoms as per different um, uh, categories, the D shell, S shell, S shell, P shell, and F shell. So if we think about D shell, we have elements such as uh, copper, iron, um, cobalt, um, aluminum, and so on. These heavy industrial elements that create a lot of the infrastructure around us. So we can intuit that this essentially is capturing the property of presence. The S orbital or S shell elements such as hydrogen and helium power suns, and therefore we have a sense that they're capturing or are a manifestation of light's property of power. When we consider the P shell uh, elements, then we know we have things like silicon and carbon, so we can just intuit that this has to do with uh, essentially the display of knowledge. And when we consider F shell, we know that these are massive experiments at the atomic level of uh, combining together the most number of protons, neutrons, and electrons, and therefore it becomes a carrier of harmony. So we're seeing that essentially that due to this iteration of this light matrix, then there's a new strata that's created that has a high degree of complexification of presence power knowledge harmony showing up as a larger number of the differentiated atoms. And if we consider a further iteration of this light-based matrix, then we see the organic surfacing um, in the first layer of uh, life. And we, we know that any living cell has four molecular plans in it. These are proteins, polysaccharides, nucleic acids, and lipids. But if we think about proteins, we know that they are a carrier of this light's property of presence. Um, if we think about polysaccharides, they're sources of energy in the cells, so they're carriers of power. Nucleic acids uh, essentially summarize the knowledge in the cell and so are a carrier of knowledge, and lipids create natural compartments to promote harmony. And so we see that there's the organic surfacing at the molecular levels that also is an outcome of iterating or, or the complexification of these core ideas of presence, power, knowledge, harmony. So we see that there's organic surfacings in matter and life that are all the outcomes or the complexification of these things that we call presence, power, knowledge, and harmony. So now when we think about computational mechatronics, uh, some things to point out is that in opposition to the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics, which is uh, probabilistic, um, here we see an organic light-based output that is due to several acts of quantization through a process of reverse extrapolation, but more importantly, through a process of induction from the outputs of the light-based matrix. We can intuit that there's a different fundamental activity in the minutiae of space, and this must be central to any kind of computational mechatronics that need to be designed. And so what we get a sense for is that this fundamental core of organicness must be read differently. And therefore there's a different genre of mechanic, mechatronic devices that would be required to read this organic output um, of the light-based matrix. 
So essentially these devices would require different site of the dynamics in the minutiae of space. And if we consider um, essentially computational devices, then we know that they, they have to have implicit in their memory logical gates and the ability to arbit arbitrate functionality. And we find that in the electromagnetic spectrum, which could become a uh, essentially a, a strata in which such computational mechatronic devices are, are created, uh, memory can be seen as a function of different frequencies or wavelengths of light. Logical gates can be seen as due to or being created by constructive and destructive interference of waves. And the, the a large number of amount of functionality can be seen from the, from the, the third layer for, of the light matrix in which there are many, many different seed forms that, that are possible. Similarly, at the quantum particle level, uh, we may think about uh, the electron in a particular orbit around an atom as being, uh, being made to represent memory. We can think about logical gates as being a function of essentially combination of orbits and the action of, of photons to, to flip the status of these orbits. And similarly, we can think about the functionality also as deriving from the third layer in light, which creates many, many different unique seeds at the quantum particle level. When we think about atoms, then memory can be a function of the reversible reaction in um, a molecular conglomerate of atoms. Um, we can think about logical gates as being groups of atoms that will always react in a predictable way. And we can also, uh, going back to the light-based matrix, see that there's a large amount of functionality that becomes possible. And this is apparent also by the increasing number of atoms. When we think about molecular plants, then memory can be summarized or created through particular kinds of proteins that exist in one of more stable states. When we think about logical gates, then we can essentially think about these proteins being uh, changing their state in a predictable way due to some kind of stimulus. And the arbitrating functionality, again, is derived from the light-based matrix. Now, some technological extrapolations that we can see right away that we could have nano cyborgs that could be electromagnetic based, quantum particle based, atom based, or molecular plant based. And the essential thing that would make these nano, nano cyborgs organic is mechanism to make choice in real time. So that would uh, necessitate some kind of programming at each of these four levels that would not in any way impede the natural organicness seeking to emerge. And um, based also on the light-based matrix, <clears throat> we can intuit that there's fourfold logic to leverage uh, flexible circuitry. So if we think about the, the kinds of nanocyborgs that could be created and the application areas at the molecular plan level, which is the easiest thing to envision, and then we look backwards, then we know that cellular health of all cells is basically based on the right functioning of the molecular plans and a balance of, of uh, essentially all four molecular plans acting together. And so we can envision quantum computational nanocyborgs that could generate quantum phenomena such as superposition, entanglement, tunneling, and annealing. So for example, taking a healthy or a well-functioning pro uh, protein or a cell and superposing it on another cell to create a, an essential state of heating as well. If we think about atoms, then we can think of naturally occurring or the entanglement causing nanocyborgs that we could envision would entangle a set of meta functions. Uh, so if we think about gold, silicon, or a number of other elements, each of these represents some function but it would be possible to entangle these, so not chemically mix them, but to entangle them to influence a process of crystallization that may create a different kinds of materials uh, with, with new properties. And if we think about the electromagnetic spectrum, then what we're saying is that 
essentially the script of space-time energy gravity that exists at the quantum veil. Uh, if we have an electromagnetic, um, say light-based quantum computational sensing and a cyborg, then it, it may be engineered to sense a rate of change in uh, particular uh, frequencies or wavelengths, and, and therefore, uh, or, or even impose uh, different uh, frequencies and wavelengths, and therefore could uh, potentially change the uh, script of space-time energy gravity at the genetic level. So coming to summary and conclusion, this paper generally suggests uh, a, a new genre of light-based quantum computational nanocyborgs. These cyborgs would be able to influence genetic type script because of the ability envisioned to influence space-time energy gravity information. An important point is that this light-based model assumes that organicness is ubiquitous, but we have to know how to read it. So it exists not only in animate, but inanimate matter as well. There's a particular kind of a sensing mechanism that we had briefly talked about with the electromagnetic uh, nano uh, cyborg of a sensing nature that would be required to interface with such organicness. The resulting nano cyborgs would be of a different kind. So, for example, we could have tunneling nano cyborgs, annealing nano cyborgs, entanglement nano cyborgs, superposition nano cyborgs that are all uh, quantum phenomena, but we could also have sensing nano cyborgs. The action of these could be further enabled by machine learning and neural networks. And finally, some application areas would be in cellular healing and medical technology, material sciences, and the alteration of genetic type information amongst other possible areas. Thank you.